I'm presently CEO and Chairman of Asia Inc., which is a medium-sized company, about 150 uh, employees globally based in, in uh, Northern California. I'm also Professor Emeritus from Stanford University, where I taught for about 23 years in the area of uh, uh, electrical engineering, specifically digital communication. Uh, I believe that I was inducted into the Internet Hall of Fame because of the area of dis digital subscriber lines about 20, 25 years ago. Uh, I did the initial designs uh, that are used everywhere today. There's about a half a billion DSLs around the world and um, have the basic patents, did the designs and so forth uh, for those uh, DSL systems at that time. Well, in that part of internet leadership, basically getting high speeds to consumers prior to the time um, in the early 90s where we did this work, um, the only way to connect to the internet was at a few thousand or maybe 10,000 kilobits per second on a voice band modem. Um, so the area of DSL basically took that up several orders of magnitude to the megabits per second today, hundreds of megabits per second. Connections are feasible on the uh, copper uh, connections. So. That enabled uh, some of the, uh, the newer types of applications to exploit the higher bandwidth, whether it was browsing, um, internet browsers, or large file transfers, obviously video uh, over the internet and such are, are now all feasible uh, because the basic uh, access connection to the consumer will support uh, the speeds that allow that to happen. Well, there's one breakthrough moment that I'll never forget. I still remember the date, March 10th, 1993, uh, where uh, the prototypes for DSL that, uh, that I had been involved in designing, uh, many Stanford students had joined me in a company, it was a small company at the time, uh, as well as a number of professionals. And we entered them into a competition which had some of the biggest companies in the world uh, in it all vying for this international national standard uh, to select the transmission formats for DSL. And uh, we submitted a prototype. The odds were stacked against us politically and otherwise, but it performed so much better than all of the other uh, methods, uh, sometimes a factor of 100 improvement over some of the other systems, ran time four times faster, uh, was much more resilient to noise, so forth. Um, we were selected. Um, despite all the politics, and uh, it was a unanimous vote um, by the American National Standards Institute, and then it went to the International Telecommunications Union later, it was standardized there uh, also. So I'll never forget that day, and we knew that uh, we had made it, so to speak, that day when they, uh, they called our uh, technique's name. Well. Uh, I believe that the ability of people around the world to be able to communicate, which the Internet has essentially enlarged significantly the last decade or two, is a very good thing. Uh, there's some bad transmissions, perhaps some good transmissions, but none of us is quite qualified necessarily to say which ones are bad or which ones are, are good. But that ability to communicate, um, to draw information um, uh, about topics of interest uh, to people has been a very good thing and it continues uh, to grow. So I don't believe there are any clouds uh, in that sense uh, over, over the internet. Any uh, technology of size and the internet is about as big as you can get in terms of size will face its challenges, uh, whether they're political, um, technological, or otherwise. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, the internet has faced a number of those challenges in the past and has continued to grow and thrive and it will surmount all the channel challenges that are before it today as well. And one, one of the things that, that I believe you'll see is is uh, the access connections. Um, we should see over the next five to ten years a billion people getting a billion bits per second uh, if they need it or want to use it, and I believe there will be uses for it. The greatest concern would be that somehow the, the vested interests of whether it's governments or large companies would prevent the 
or reduce the innovation that has led to the Internet's expansion. And that has been a very good thing. Uh, it's been opposed in the past uh, by the same uh, big companies and governments, but it's been transcended and it's been much to their advantage because they make a lot more money today than they did previously because of the Internet. Uh, and that will, um, those challenges continue to abound today. Uh, in many cases, uh, they're serious in the form of the net neutrality and equal access of all uh, applications, consumers, innovators uh, to the bandwidth of the Internet. And it's never been completely equal uh, over time. That's a misconception. But to keep some level of that uh, neutrality present so that innovation can continue to drive it forward. And that's going to come from all of the people around the world, particularly the small guys and little guys in many places. I've been one of them. I understand what it's like to be there. Uh, those are the true drivers of innovation in the world. And they, you don't want to squeeze their voice out, even if you're a big government or a big company with a vested interest. Because in the long run, you're going to be better off also because of that. Well, you would hope that, that uh, Every individual on Earth can be connected. Uh, this large communion, if you will, of, of, uh, of discussion, messages, information, um, I think uh, all in all, you know, leads to, to good things, even though there may be some, some negatives that, that, that happen as, as a consequence of that. The average is, is going to be uh, is going to be positive, and the more that people can communicate with one another, uh, the better the chance we have for humanity uh, as a human race. Well, if we knew what the best possible future was, then we could probably define those actions, but um, I would not try to be so arrogant as to presume I knew what the best possible future uh, is. Each one of us has their own biases and thoughts on what is appropriate content or uh, who should be able to access the internet and what does security mean and whose interest is it in. Um, so um, I, I don't believe I, can, I could answer that question because I don't know what the, uh, the best possible future is.